this is a quick tutorial on how to use the uh, logic analyzer, the built-in logic analyzer on the digital D-Pens instrument. Um, for this setup I used uh, D-Pens 1. Um, so I'll walk you through the defaults I have to set the instrument up and then I'll show you my test panel for capturing data uh, going out of and coming into the Dpins one digital. So I, I've organized my setup into two parts. On the left I have just my general settings for the instrument to set it up to do uh, digital communications and then my buttons over here on the right are really setting up my logic analyzer and my read buffer for capturing data coming back to me. Um, so over here on the left um, these four buttons here, I'm just defining my, my clock data read and strobe or latch enable pin. My V low and V high buttons are defining my logic state one and zero. So my logic high state is three volts and my low state is zero volts. I'm using the normal clock mode, which means I'm using uh, either D pins 5, 10, 15, or 20 are my available pins in the normal mode. And the my duty cycle, I have set to 40%. My vector period is my clock rate. And I'm using the, the serial type I'm going to be using is manual, where I just put in the protocol and the ones and zeros that I want. So I'm not going to be using the protocol aware uh, style programming for this one. And then my serial idle button is defining the state of my clock data and strobe pins when I'm not communicating on the bus. Uh, so that's what the C, D, and S stand for is clock data strobe. And the capitalization of those letters define whether or not the, the pin is held high or low. So in this case, they're all lowercase, meaning my clock, my data, and my strobe pin are all held at zero volts when I'm not on the bus communicating. Over here on the right side, I've set up my logic analyzer, so my trigger mode, I'm doing a spy example, so I'm going to have it in serial mode. Uh, the capture is set to current. I think you have a couple of options here. Um, current is the default mode that captures all the pins. And then the logic analyzer signals I have set to wide, so it's going to show me all 20 pins for D pins 1. And it's also going to include the extra buffer capture enable pin. So those show me that uh, when, a, when a read buffer has been initiated, I'll see uh, one of the extra pins go high, indicating that the buffer is capturing. The logic analyzer mode button uh, is basically the oversampling button. So I set it to the default of uh, 4x oversample. My comparator is the trigger comparator. So uh, typically, you set it to a value uh, halfway between your high and low state voltage. In this case, it was 3 volts, so I set it to 1.5. And, and my read pin is D pins 8, so I set my read pin here to reflect that as well. That's what my buffer is going to be capturing data on. So going to my test panel, it's a pretty straightforward panel. Um, there's a pre-measure sequence that I'm going to go through, and then there's a measure sequence where I'm going to capture the data that I'm after. So in the pre-measure state, what I'm doing is, is I'm initiating my logic analyzer trigger, and then I'm also turning on my, I'm starting my read mode, so I'll start capturing data in my read buffer. And then here is the button that's actually going to do the emit. So I'm going to be using a SPI protocol of 16 bits, so this is defining basically the number of clocks that I'll have is 16. And then I'm going to do 8 bits of writing, so 1000 zero, 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 and a 1100. Zero, zero. I think that's uh, hexadecimal 8C. Uh, then there's a semicolon, and this is my read mask, so it's I can define how many bits I want to read back and, and keep. Uh, if you don't want to capture certain bits in the buffer, you can put a zero in place of the one, 
basically it's a don't care or an X also it, it reads that as a don't care and it throws a value away but in this case I want to capture capture all eight bits so I have a read mask of all ones I have a sequence delay so I'm going to wait a period of time for all my bits to come in and then I'm going to turn my read mode off so what happens in the measure sequence I'm defining a read size for however many bits I'm expecting in this case I'm expecting eight so I'm going to use the read data measurement button and I'm going to save those values to my spy read and then I'm going to to switch the buffer size of my read and capture a lot of bits so I can see everything in my logic analyzer and I use my logic analysis measurement button and I'm going to save that out to a local variable in order to view the data for the logic analyzer you have to save it out to a local variable so you can get the right data type display but in general this is a pretty standard practice um, at least for a development type mode I, I think when you switch to a production mode you can drop the logic analyzer part out of this and then just stick to the data save uh, but I want to demo the uh, logic analyzer through the plot view so I'll go ahead and compile this and then I have to set up my plot view for the logic analyzer so I left click on the local variable and I select rectangular view make this a little bit bigger so it's easier to read so my y, pr my y parameter is binary my format is going to be index and I'm going to change my X parameter down here to the index as well and I want to view this as time so if I just auto this when the logic analyzer is initiated and we've set it up it displays uh, random patterns this is basically I use this as a check to make sure I have the logic analyzer set up in the right mode uh, time on the bottom and index for the format uh, but basically what you see is um, from 1 to 20 these are the D pins D pins 1 through D pins 20 so I can set my center I think my right pin is you can check that pin 9 so I'll just center on pin 9 and then I can set my scale to something a little bit closer so I can read this I'm going to make this one and a half so I can see this a little better and then uh, I typically change the color of them it makes them a little bit easier to see so we'll change the trace colors to something else other than black and we'll redraw it so now I have my logic analyzer set up so if I move this here and run the program we can see what a capture looks like on the logic analyzer and there you have it the plot is centered on pin 9, which is our right pin. So we can see we've emitted 100, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. The position below it is showing what we're reading back from the part. And below that, we can see the latch enable or the strobe that's on during the entire emit. And above our right pin, we have our 16 clocks. So that's a brief introduction into the logic analyzer.